welcome to Evolution Revolution. I am thrilled to have you with us today. It's such a pleasure because you know this show is about finding new tools and skills to support you and all of us in having the most peaceful, healthy, loving, wonderful life. I'm always looking for people who have discovered new areas, real, real skills that work, something that's transformative, something that's unknown. Now today we're doing something a little bit different because I'm going to be talking about what I've developed. And many of you who've been watching me on television in Santa Barbara for now about nine years are very familiar with the heart space system that I developed so that you can have cooperative, intimate, loving relationships. And also the sales forum, which is all about relationships at your office or at your company or your job. And luckily, they're the same basic skills. They're based on the six-part conversation. And if you'd like to learn more about it, I think you probably all know by now that I offer a one-hour private complimentary telephone session so that you can learn these skills in that one hour and see if you want to learn more. And of course, you're always welcome to learn more. And every month in Santa Barbara and also online, there are questions and answers. The questions are the ones you send me. And it's the Ask the Love and Relationship Coach column, again, that I've been writing for about nine years. It's online at sbfamilylife.com. So please keep sending me your questions because I love answering them. Now, my special guest today, one of my dearest friends, who's been a student of mine for a little bit over a year, is right here with us. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much, Great Susan. to have you here. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. I'm so happy to be here. And this is a live television debut for Lisa, who is actually a very talented actor. So it's a fun on a second level. <laughs> and let me tell you all about Lisa. So first of all, her last name is Sirincione. She's an actor, and she's also a singer. She just did a performance in LA that I understand was spectacular. So <laughs> let me you. tell you about her, a little bit of the resume. She's got stage and screen credits, including work that she's done in the US, work that she's done in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. and in Italy. She's bilingual. Her Italian is perfect. And this year, really very exciting year, Thank she you. was honored with the LA Weekly and LA Drama Critic Circles nomination for her role as Catherine in A View from the Bridge, which is a very, very gritty performance. I went down to LA and I saw her and she was superb. <laughs> She's also can be seen in national commercials, including a comedy spot for Sky Italia, and that was with Sandra O. Oh, and she's mm -hmm. currently working on a film, Porcupine, with W. Earl Brown. And she's playing, I think, the guitar in that one and singing, yes? Yes. yes very, yes, very yes. exciting. So <laughs> welcome again. This Thank you. Very exciting. It's so wonderful to be yeah, here. It's gonna be, gonna be fun. <laughs> now, today, as I said, we're doing something that we have not done in years on this show. We're doing role plays because if you've ever been my client or if you've ever called for a complimentary session, or if you've watched me on my friend Gigi's show, mm -hmm. you know that it's all about communication. Mm -hmm. And the key to communication is always noticing if we're triggered and calming ourselves down before we speak. I don't know that there are many people who admit this, but I will say that if you're calm and you speak to me, I can hear everything you say. If you're not calm when you speak to me, it's very hard to hear you, mm -hmm. and I guarantee that most people feel the same way even if they're not willing to admit it. Mm -hmm. So they don't hear you anyway. So don't do it. Why bother? It's a waste of time, right? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. So we're going to do a series of role plays. We have, I don't know, about 56 minutes by now, and we'll see how many we get to. And if you enjoy it, let me know, and I'll get Lisa to come back again, and we'll do more. Yay! Right? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, fantastic. So, the first role play is a depressed daughter, and she's just had a bad breakup, and I'm playing the mom, 
and I'm going to cheer her up again. This is going to be something different because it's the six-part conversation. And tonight what we're doing is we're focusing on empathy. So she's going to play someone who's upset in each of these scenarios. My job is to demonstrate either the heart space system, if it's an intimate personal thing, or the sales form skills, but it's the same six part. Okay, so be a depressed daughter. So mom, I, uh, I just, I'm really upset because, you know, Peter broke up with me and I just, I don't know why I thought that he was the one, you know, and um, I just, I got totally blindsided. I wasn't expecting it, so I just don't know what to do. I feel kind of lost, you know. Oh, honey, I'm, I can just imagine how shocked you feel because you were having such a wonderful time with him, and it was a relationship that really means a lot to you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he... I don't think he met somebody else, which is almost harder because I feel like maybe there was something I could have done differently or I don't know, maybe there's like something wrong with me. I just wish that I had some more answers, you know? Yeah, I can really understand that you want to be sure that at some point in the future you can speak to him and get your questions answered and really see what happened. Yeah. If it was because of something that he didn't even share with you. Yeah. Or if it's because for some reason there was just some connection that was missing. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And what can I do that would help? What would you like to do? Do you want to do you want to talk about it tonight or do you want to I don't think forget I would. about it? I don't really want to talk about it and I think I'd really, like, I don't want to go out, but maybe we could just hang out and, like, have a movie night and eat ice cream, like chocolate ice cream with peanut butter. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Perfect. But yes. no romantic films. Okay. And, and no sad films. Comedies only. Okay. Okay. So you pick. Okay. You go to Netflix, and I will go to the store, and I'll get your favorite ice cream. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. That's cool. Thanks. Yeah. So we're going to have to try not to cry, Lisa and I, because <laughs> she's such a good actor that I'm like completely, you know, I'm completely sucked into I'm, this drama. I'm right? like reliving my high school like, <laughs> breakup or something. Right. It's, uh, and, you know, and that's the beauty of these role plays. In a role play, you authentically become that other person. If you are in your heart, if you enter your heart, mm. there is no disconnection between you and the other person, so actually you feel it. So mm. what worked for you in that one? Uh, what really worked for me was feeling that uh, my, my, my sadness and my need um, for support was validated and that you really got what I was going through and I had this feeling that maybe you had gone through it at some point in your life. and. Just having that camaraderie and feeling that intimacy with my mom, uh, with you, really made me feel at peace and calm and taken care of. Beautiful. And I can just tell you, Lisa and I obviously worked on these. And at one point, I tried to go the route of when I was a girl, da 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 da, -da And believe me, that didn't work at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can't try to fix it until you actually empathize and know what the other person's feeling and needing. And you can't then turn it around and make it about you. I mean, obviously, it's not about you, it's mm -hmm. about her. Yeah. But how tempting it is for us, either to fix it because we feel uncomfortable, or talk about ourselves because we feel uncomfortable. So those are the two big you know, caveats there yeah. to avoid. Definitely, okay. definitely. Now you'll see how talented she is because the next one is a completely different one. Now this is an HR scenario. We've got an, a new hire at a company. I play the HR director, and many of you know that I do HR work for some of my clients. And so now this is a new hire, and she is really disgusted. What are you telling me? I've only had two days of training, and you expect me to memorize a handbook that's 50 pages long, and then it sells something to somebody on the phone that I can't even see? I just, I don't really understand. What's happening in this training? It's like we got two days of training. I'm really upset. I'm trying to do a good job. 
Yes, I know, Lisa. This is so new for you. And there's so much information. I can really hear how shocked you must feel because you need the training so that you're going to be able to answer the questions of those poten potential clients on the phone, right? Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm really excited to be here. It's a good opportunity for me. And I just don't understand why I wasn't given more support. And, you know, I've been listening to the people in the other cubicles, and they're not selling either. So I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> She's so good. <laughs> it's impossible to keep a straight face. Sorry. <laughs> this is so good. Okay. Okay. So back to my hard, hard edge <laughs> HR persona. Yes, I can really understand that you didn't get the information you needed on your first and your second day. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful you came to me rather than letting it get worse. So there are a number of different solutions that I can offer you. All right, hit And I me. want you to pick the one that's best for you, All right. okay? All right, I'm listening. Okay, so the first opportunity is you can shadow Bob, who's one of our best salespeople. You can sit in his cubicle with him. Actually, he has a nice office now. Do you mean Roberto? I do. I mean Roberto. All right, Roberto. Yes. yes. I like him. Okay. So you can sit in his office with him. He'd be more than delighted. You can listen to how he handles it. That's one thing. Okay. The second thing is, have you ever called tech support when you had a problem with your computer or your phone or any other thing like yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. So you know how those people say to you, would you hold on for a few minutes? Yeah. Okay. So what they're doing is they're just looking at their manual. They're sitting right there, but they put you on hold because that way they can run to the other cubicle and ask someone else if they don't know the answer. So you can do that too. All right. And I have a feeling nobody really explained that to you. Is that right? That's right. Okay. That's right. I was a little left in the dark about that. Sounds, it sounds that way. Yeah, thank you. That that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that's real good. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So would you like to? Yeah, I mean, R Roberto's like, he's like a legend around here. Yes. So I'd really yeah. like the opportunity to learn from him if, you know, that's a possibility. I, I really want to do a good job. So I appreciate that. Wonderful. Thank you. I feel. I will set it up for you and it will happen by tomorrow morning. I guarantee it. All right. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Yeah, I think you're, think you're going to do a great job here. Thank you. Make sure you come to me if you're confused. If you have a problem, you come to me right away. Thank you. We'll fix it. Thank you. Yeah, great. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. That's good. That's good. So, out of the role play. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What worked? Uh, Except that you're brilliant, so that's what worked. <laughs> I'm sorry I started laughing. <laughs> uh, what worked for me was um, hearing that my boss and somebody that I look up to um, wasn't, you know, going to push me out the door or kick me to the curb because I'd made a mistake was really willing to work with me and give me um, new skills so that I can grow because that's really what I'm excited about, you know, and being in this new job. So that was, that felt good to me. And of course, no HR director is pushing someone out of the door who sounds like she works for the mafia <laughs> or one of the, her father and grandfather are all in the mob. So I had to really unhook myself pretty quickly because I did not expect that, you know, I said to Lisa, do whatever you feel like doing in the role play, you know, make it fun, make it entertaining for everybody who's watching. So that was a very important part of it. Whatever somebody feeds you in the moment, that's what we're showing you here today. Yes, I've been doing it for years, but I've never had this exact situation. When you learn the six-part conversation, you've got it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Whatever somebody throws you, whatever happens when you answer the phone, when you answer the door, when you go anywhere, whatever happens, you're prepared because you know how to calm yourself down and you know how to connect to the unmet needs of the other person. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you've seen, because Lisa does it in real life, too, I'm happy to tell you. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> yeah. So now this next one is a completely different scenario. It's about a neighbor who's complaining to me about my barking dog. Hi, Susan. I live next door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, your dog barked last night, um, and this is the third time that I've spoken to you. Your puppy, he's really cute and all, but you know, I've got a new little baby in the house. I'm not getting much sleep, and my husband goes to work in the morning, and I will be going to work in the morning soon as soon as maternity leave is over, and I'd really like to have a little peace of mind. So could you, you know, take care of your 
your dog problem. Oh, I'm so, so, so regretful that he barked last night. I can just understand that with a baby in the house, you and your husband yeah. must be just desperate for sleep and really need to have Capital quiet. Capital D, desperate, yes. Yeah, I can, I can so understand this. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and you heard him three times three last times night? Three times last night, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I have a thought about how I could fix this. Okay. Um, my husband actually let the puppy out last night, gave me a break, and so I have a feeling that what would work is mm -hmm. if I am with the puppy, and the puppy's on a leash, even in the middle of the night when I let him out, mm -hmm. he's not going to think it's playtime. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just open the door and out he goes, he doesn't think, oh, it's 2 in the morning, I better come back quickly. Mm -hmm. He thinks it's playtime. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll get up with him each time. Mm -hmm. I will put him on a leash. Mm -hmm. I will be with him outside. Mm -hmm. And that way, I don't think there's going to be any more problem. I think he'll be very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give you my phone number. And you text me tomorrow morning and just let me know what happened. Because I'll be with him, but I want to make sure that you're okay too. All right? That, that, sounds, like a, that sounds like a good deal. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. You're I will welcome. let you know in the morning. Yeah, you're welcome. And have a great day. <sighs> yeah, you too. Thanks. Thanks. So what worked in that scenario? Uh, what worked was, again, the confirmation that my needs were heard and the empathy for this new time in my life where I have a young child in the house and feeling that I was really seen and heard and validated in that way. Yeah. Be beautiful. Now I want to make sure you understand this is not about caving in. It is not about giving in, caving in, saying yes. We carefully created scenarios where the person who is upset has either a valid confusion, you'll hear some of the ones we're going to do in the next few moments, so it's a valid confusion, or a real problem. Mm. No neighbor is going to tolerate being awakened three times a night by a new puppy, and if any of you have been a neighbor or had a puppy, you know, you, know, you, you hear about it. And there are countless scenarios that we're gonna describe that it's not about caving in. Please don't cave in. If we were doing a longer conversation where somebody's making an unrealistic and ungrounded demand, then you know I would show the whole six-part conversation where then little by little I would motivate and inspire that person to co-create the solution. And if you have further questions about this, again, send me an email, I'll answer your questions, or send me an email and I'll send you the six-part conversation for intimate relationships and also for sales. And they're both on my fan pages at uh, Facebook, the Susan Allen Heartspace and the Susan Allen Sales Forum. So there is tons of information for you guys. So the next one, this is my favorite. This is my favorite, okay. This is about a small child who's been bullied at school. Mommy, when I went to school today, Johnny pushed me and I was just really upset because I, I just wanted to play with my friends. And he told me that I couldn't come in the sandbox anymore. And I really want to go because tomorrow we're doing the art class with Miss Thomas, but I don't want to go to school tomorrow because I don't want to see Johnny. Oh, honey, I am so sorry to hear that you had such a scary thing at school. I know how much you love school on every other day. And I know you get up every morning, you're excited to go to school. And you can't wait and you, you even have so many friends in that class. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just so sad to hear that he really scared you and it just came out of nowhere, right? You had no idea that this was going to happen. But it was in the sandbox. I love the sandbox. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, so is there anything else that happened that I need to know about before I talk to your teacher, sweetie? No, but it was scary. But I didn't want to didn't want to tell the teacher cuz I don't know, I was too shy, so. Sure, sure. So I'll do that for you. 
Okay. I'll do that for you. So I'm going to call the school right now. Okay. And I know you don't want to go to school until this is handled, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to call the school. I'm either going to speak to your teacher or even the principal. Okay. And if I solve it today, great. Otherwise, I'll come to school with you tomorrow and I'll fix it. Really? Because, yeah. no, I don't want you to have anything like this, sweetie. It's not okay. Thanks. You have to make sure that you're safe and you're, you know, you're only four. So that's what I'm here for. I'm four and a half. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so, so, perfect. so what worked for you here? Uh, I think um, definitely, I mean, I remember when I was four. And, Do you? Uh, yeah. Wow. And also, uh, and, and have, you know, knowing a lot of kids and my, my godchildren and cousins, uh, how important it is as a little kid to need to feel safe and to need to feel at home and especially having that from your mother and feeling the same safety at school. Yes. It's really important. Yes. So that's what really spoke to me. To little Beautiful. to little me. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And I actually created that scenario because last year I worked with a four year old boy who actually was the bully. And he was having real trouble at school and he was in danger of being suspended. And what was fabulous, because he's a really smart, smart young man is that in two sessions with me that were each like, I don't know, 20 minutes long, he completely changed his behavior based on the coaching that I gave him. And he never bullied anyone again. And he got all sorts of commendations from his teacher and the principal. And they wrote letters to his parents. They couldn't believe how quickly it turned around. And what did I do with the little boy who had done the bullying is exactly the same thing lots of empathy for what he was feeling and needing. He was really annoyed at his friend for whatever the reason was, and he needed attention. So the key reason that he had been bullying a little boy who had been his friend before was that he wanted more attention. Mm, that makes perfect sense. And you know, people don't normally think about that. Definitely. They don't think about the motivation for the bully. Mm -hmm. So whether you're dealing with somebody who has been bullied or you're dealing with mm. someone who has been the bullier, just know it's about feelings and unmet needs. That's what it always boils down to. Mm. Absolutely. Okay, now here's Beautiful. a great one. Okay, so in this role play, Lisa's a teenager, I'm the mom, and I find out that she was drinking last night when she went out. She's home now, it's the morning, and she is sick as a dog. She's got her first hangover. Okay. Honey. Oh, oh, God. Can you just lower your voice? Oh, just, Mom, let's bring it down. Sure, sweetie. It sounds as if you really feel ill. Uh, and you just want me to keep the shades down. Yeah. 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 So you were out with Janie at that party? I know you got in at your curfew, but I didn't realize you were feeling so ill, sweetie. Yeah, Mom, I'm not feeling good. And, you know, I know that you want to, like, be all up in my business and stuff, but if we could maybe, like, save that conversation for another time. Sure, I just, of course. Yeah, of cool. course. Thank you, thank you. And, like, first thing, what can I get you to feel better? Do you want an Alka-Seltzer? Do you Alka -Seltzer. want coffee? Coffee. What would you like? Yeah, honey? coffee, coffee. And uh, do we have any pancakes? Of course, yeah. I can make pancakes. Thanks, sure. Mom. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, I know how rotten you feel. I I know this. I this is familiar. So I will do everything. Really, I can. Mom? Yeah, <laughs> we're all human, right? We all, you know, do things and have to learn the hard way that. <laughs> Those decisions weren't the best Mom's decisions. Mom's got a rock and roll background. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. No spiked hair, but for sure. <laughs> yeah, so I'll make you some coffee. Thanks. I'll make you some pancakes, and uh, we'll talk later. Don't worry about it. Okay. Just get some sleep. Do you want me to wake you up in like an hour for breakfast? What do you think? Yeah, like an hour. Okay. Yeah, great. Right. Thanks. Okay, and don't pull up the shades. The sunlight will not be good. Not good. Okay, not good. great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Now, before I ask Lisa what worked, I just want to say, I work with 
lots of families to transform addiction. So when I show you this role play that has nothing to do with punishment, nothing to do with harsh criticism, mm. it's on purpose, it's on point. Mm. The only way that you can successfully motivate and inspire anyone to do anything mm. is if you are seen as not an enemy, not the other side, mm. but as someone who understands. And in a scenario like this, I do understand. I was a teenager. I didn't realize that I couldn't drink, you know? The key is when somebody's ill, when somebody's made a bad decision, made a bad choice, that's not the time to preach because if you do, and of course I work with people who don't realize this, it takes us that much longer to get the teenager to trust the mom. Mm. So ride the horse in the direction it's going. If she's made a mistake and she's sick as a dog and she has a horrible hangover, be kind and be compassionate so that then later, the next day, the next day, you can start to talk about how to make better choices at parties. Mm. What's practical, what's rational, what her body can endure and tolerate because she's tiny compared to other people at a party. You know, these are things, they don't teach this in, in biology class. And these are the kind of things that are practical life skills. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> and what worked for you? The Is biggest the thing that worked for me was knowing that my mom wasn't going to come in there and scream at me and ground me and that she really put herself in my shoes and I got a little insight into her life and didn't feel like I had majorly screwed up. That was the biggest thing. Yeah, and you know, even if somebody screws up, accusing them of that doesn't get you where you want to go. Accusing them of that isn't going to make them buckle down and be serious because as you know if you've watched me before this is all about whole brain function mm. so if someone doesn't have enough safety brain which is why people get drunk regularly not not once as a teenager but if they get drunk regularly they don't have the ability to think in a way that's going to keep them safe and or they may not have enough logical and analysis of data in this case how much can I at my body weight and the condition of my body, you know, liver, adrenals, et cetera, how much alcohol can I tolerate and what kind of alcohol? Different people have different abilities, right? So this kind of a scenario is a teenager who's very right-brained, not sufficiently left-brained, and that's why you absolutely have to be careful to speak to her in a compassionate and loving way. Otherwise, you will have somebody who runs away, leaves home, all sorts of horrendous things can happen, okay? Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna switch over to a business scenario, yeah. completely different one, <clears throat> okay. Now, in this one, Lisa and I are real estate brokers, we're co-workers. We've been working together on a number of different house sales, mm -hmm. and we were having what I thought was a fine time of it, now it turns out we just did a closing and Lisa, the co-broker, is suddenly demanding 60-40 split with her getting 60. Mm. Even though up to now, it hasn't been like that. So let's hear what her story is. So, um, you know, I brought this deal in. So I think that it's only fair that I get the bigger commission, the bigger portion of the commission. Hmm. I'm just really confused because I know that when we sold the other two houses, we did a 50-50 split. You brought in one and I brought in one. So yeah, that's right. my assumption was that we were just going to even it out. You would bring in one, I'd bring in one. Now it sounds as if you're feeling differently about it, that you want to be compensated because you brought this in, and then do I understand that you're also feeling that the fair thing is that when I bring in the deal, then I'll get the 60% split. Is that how you're seeing it? Yes, yes, that is how I'm seeing it. Okay, and so just a little bit different from what we talked about, Yeah. but not so, so nothing really new, just instead of assuming it's gonna balance out, you wanna get paid 
more when you bring it in and I'll get paid more when I bring it in. Okay, sure, I That's don't have fine. a problem with that. So we're okay, we're good? That's good, yeah, thank okay. you. Fabulous, good. fabulous. And I, and I think we've got a couple more properties that we may be able to close this month. Very yeah. exciting. Let's, let's, let's wrap those up. Let's hustle. Let's do it. Okay, super. Great. So what worked in this scenario? Um, what, what worked was knowing that my need for success was being met and my, and, you know, my need to, uh, for confirmation that I had brought in this deal was being met and feeling um, really seen that I had, you know, been, been successful and gotten the job done and, yes. and been a really active member of the team. Beautiful. And again, I used a real <clears throat> scenario from one of my former clients for this. And this was a case where I could have obviously freaked out. We had a 50-50 split on two houses. Now why is she suddenly demanding 60-40 with her getting 60, mm -hmm. right? So the natural reaction in business is you just freak out. <laughs> and it doesn't work. Here in, I don't know, it probably took about three minutes, maybe it even took less. Mm. I was able to hear her perspective. It was different from mine. I have more of an upper right world view, more of a global world that works for everyone view. And she has a more practical point of view. Well, I brought this one in, you'll bring in another one, I'll bring in this one, you'll bring in that one. And everybody gets paid appropriate depending on who brings in the deal. So she's more logical and analytical in this scenario, and I'm more holistic. But mm. it doesn't matter. The bottom line is I did not freak out, mm. and that's why it worked. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Definitely. Good. Great. Okay. Next. In this scenario, a best friend is moving across the country, and it's really painful. Mm. Yeah. You know, I thought that things in L.A. were going to go way different, and uh, I'm just finding that I can't make ends meet. So I guess Arizona gets me back. My mom will be thrilled, but, uh, man, I'm, I'm going to miss you. And I feel like I just really messed up with my business. I thought it was really going to take off, and I can't even pay my rent this month. So I guess it's time to uh, pack it up, pack it up. I can hear how really stunned you are because we've had so many plans that we've made for November and December and January with an assumption that it would all happen. Yeah. We just expected it would happen, right? Yeah. 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 And that situation with Larry, you had no expectation that that deal would fall through. You were counting on that deal it looked good yep and that one deal would have made such a big difference for yeah you. absolutely yeah absolutely yeah. I'm really disappointed about that I bet I'm sure you're really angry that after how close you came to closing that deal and Larry telling you that he's sending the contract in I can just guess that you're just yeah. furious I can't even yeah I, because you I need just to yeah. be honest yeah you know, all you needed was him to be honest, because then you would have put your time elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I've just wasted a lot. But yeah. uh, what are we going to do? Thanks for well, hearing yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, what we're going to do is you're going to stay in Arizona for a while. You're going to put more money together. Clearly, you're going to come and stay with me a bunch of times. <laughs> You're and you'll best. figure a way to make the life happen that you want. Okay. I mean, this is not a defeat. This is just a detour, right? That's all you have yeah. to think about. Right? Yeah. 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 I guess it'll be nice to be out of the city for a little while anyway. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And you'll let me know anything I can do to help. Thanks. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. It's going to so, be okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what worked with that one? Knowing that my friend didn't think I was such a failure, that, you know, it's, it is just a detour. It was an unexpected need, and it's an opportunity for me to regroup. And just knowing that she supported me and wasn't judging me, that you supported me and weren't yeah, judging me, yeah, yeah that really yeah. helped. 
I, you know, honestly, <clears throat> being compassionate is not the words that I teach you. It's not the phrases that I teach you, though that's a great way to get started. You know, I have a lot of clients and I'll be creating verbiage with them on the phone and asking them to write it down. And, you know, even, I, I, th I think that the youngest person I ever worked with, it must have been the four-year-old that I just described, but when I worked with his sister who was seven when I started working with her, you know, I had to, you know, say, please, would you please get a pencil? <laughs> you know, not a pen. And, you know, could you ask your mom for a piece of paper? It's amazing. It works. No matter how old we are, having the verbiage. And now that the brother is uh, older, he says, I actually, I don't, he said to me just a couple of days ago, Sunday, he said, I remember what you said. I don't need to write it down. So that's another difference if you're really young and you're learning empathy. You really have a speed level to absorb this that still, frankly, it astounds me. It astounds me because I know how long mm -hmm. it took me to develop these skills mm -hmm. and master these skills and mm -hmm. use these skills. You know, and we're talking about 50 notebooks worth. You know, and when I then asked him to repeat it back to me, he repeated it back to me. Mm. So that's just, I know, so it makes me so jealous, It's a high level of absorption right? there, yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. incredible. Okay, now yeah. the next one, again, very practical. This is a scenario which, again, this is based on something one of my clients went through. <laughs> a client is very, very angry, very, very angry, because there was a sales training that was unacceptable. And she's going to complain about it, and I am the account exec, and I'm going to work with her. So I dragged my butt down to Orange County on a Wednesday for this training that I, you know, really committed my time to and thought I was going to get some really valuable skills to help me marketing my business. And it was a money-making scheme. The people were talking, didn't know what they were talking about. They were there just to sell their product. And honestly, I could have done a better job presenting than them. And I am a novice at this. So I'm just really disappointed with the services that I received and the time that I wasted. Yeah, I can, I can hear that you really expected that you'd spend your time with us at the event and then you'd leave there and you'd be able to take those skills and turn them around and use them in your business. Great results. Yes, yes. That really was my incentive for going in the first place, to hear these experts speak and I really was disappointed with the quality yes. of information I received. Yeah. And I, I know the kind of business you're in, so I know how important it is for you to get the sales training you need mm -hmm. and really, really absorb it and mm -hmm. use it so that you can grow your company right now. Absolutely. That's what I'm looking for, to grow my business. And I think you said you have a hair ornament company, something about yes. long hair. Yes, I, right? I make products um, for curly hair to transform your hair if you want it to wear it shorter or a bob. Um, so it's you know it's a new line of business, but I know I've definitely benefited from it, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to reaching a lot of clients around the country and hopefully around the globe. Okay, then here's the thought that I have. Mm -hmm. because um, I know you didn't stay for the whole event. I know no. that it just was so uh, um, unpleasant for you. It didn't yes. meet enough of your needs for information, and so you didn't stay. And so what I'd like to offer you, I'd like to give you the free DVD set, or you can have the CD set if you'd rather listen to it in your car, for John Smith, who arrived after you left and did a full sales training. He's a brilliant, brilliant guy. Much lower key than Tony Robbins, but equally brilliant and successful. He speaks all over the world. And I've trained with him, and he's really brilliant. So how would that sound? That would be good. I would appreciate that. Okay, fantastic. And then I want you to get back with me mm -hmm. and let me know that you enjoyed it. We want to make this right. So let me know that you've listened, you've enjoyed it, you got what you came for, and that you're using it in your company. Because I've studied with him, and I use those skills. Okay. Myself. Okay. Right? I will do that. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. You bet. Yeah. So 
what worked here? Um, what worked was knowing that the complaints that I had were being heard and also knowing that the knowledge that I need is out there and available and that I was going to be provided with that knowledge and with that information. Yeah. Thank you. And I think a lot of it is about being taken seriously. Mm. And honestly, it doesn't matter if you're four years old or the oldest person I've worked with so far who's 85. It truly doesn't matter. We all have very much the same needs. We have a need for respect. We have a need for peace. We have a need for cooperation. We have a need for appreciation, kindness, financial security, physical safety, all those things. And there's a long list. If you'd like the list, I'll send you the whole list. <laughs> but basically, those are the needs we have. And again, I'm telling you, a four-year-old, a seven-year-old, a nine-year-old, a ten-year-old, you know, a twenty-year-old, a thirty-year-old, my age, and all the way up to, you know, the ultimate senior senior. Hmm. And when you see people that way, when you get out of your own way enough, and you hear what their needs are, and you have some training so you can really identify their needs, and you don't make it about you, and you don't immediately jump into fixing it. See, I did fix it. I mean, in all these cases, it was about, you know, I'm not giving them empathy and then hoping for the best. I want to fix the problem. I want to solve the problem. Some of the problems, like a daughter who's been out drinking for the first time, you can't fix when she's got a horrible hangover. Yeah. You just can't. <laughs> It's out of the question. You're not going to get anywhere. It's going to backfire. Mm. But some things where it's business, you, this is advanced customer service, which I teach. You have to be qualified and able to listen to a customer's complaint and make it right. Not necessarily in the moment, but you have to listen and you have to offer a couple of solutions. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks. So now, I'm this learning is another so much fun too, one. Susan. Are you? Yes. Really? And she's, she's great at this. She's an expert. So if you're learning, I'm thrilled. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. I'll expect that in our friendship too. Yes. Not just, you know, not the business stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. So Thank now you. she's a friend. She's got a an horrendous migraine. Horrendous. And anyone who's ever been ill, you know, even if the pain doesn't go away, even if the illness doesn't go away, just someone have, who's kind to you makes a difference. Mm. Oh my God, I feel like my head is stuck between two metal plates. I can't even, I can, it, it hurts to inhale. I'm not even gonna open my eyes to look at you. I'm sorry, I'm just, I feel of course. awful. Of course. Oh my goodness, I, I know you had a migraine like I don't know, like two years ago. Uh, Do you have any migraine medicine in the house? I don't, but I think um, I might have some, some uh, or no, a cold compress might be really good. All right. And if you go to the drugstore, maybe you, you could bet. get me some medication. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Would you rather have cold or ice? I think cold. Okay. I think okay. the cold would be good. Okay, yeah. fantastic. So don't move. Okay. I'll uh, go in the kitchen. I'll get that. Thank you. This is about actually solving a problem, real problem, but solving the problem based on listening to the person who's got the problem, right? So I go in the kitchen. Here, here's the compress. I'm putting it on your forehead. Thank you. Here's a dish of water. I've got one ice cube in it just to keep it cool. Okay. I'm going to the drugstore right now. I'll get you that maximum strength migraine medication. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's nothing. <sighs> it's nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. And I'll be right back. Thanks. I'll be right back. So I'll don't be worry. here. I'm not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah, listen, I'm going to take your keys okay. so that you don't have to get up and open the door again. And I don't want to leave the door unlocked. Okay. So I'm taking your keys. Okay? You're the best. Thanks. Yeah, you bet, Thanks. honey. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, this came from a scenario many, many years ago when I was going through that horrible divorce that you guys often have heard about. I was on the phone with my best friend who was in New York, and he's, he was a doc he's a doctor. And I had my first migraine ever. And I couldn't think straight, and I couldn't talk. I was in so much pain. And he said to me, okay, and he's in New York. He said, 
we have to get you something for the pain. And he literally was so sweet. He talked, I was staying at friends. I was in hiding for a long time. So I was staying at friends and they were out of town. So he's talking to me, you've got to call a drugstore. I'll talk, I'll, I'll call in the prescription. You've got to call a drugstore. And then it hit me. My friends had every medication in the world and they had five bathrooms and they were out of town. I said, wait a second. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the phone with me into each bathroom and I'll read you all of the prescriptions <laughs> and you'll tell me which one is, you know, like a migraine medication, <laughs> you know. And finally we found Vicodin. It was hysterical. He said, that's it, that's Perfect. it, that's it. And so, you know, but if he had not been that compassionate, Mm. And obviously, if he hadn't been an MD, yeah. and if my friends hadn't had all sorts of different, you know, ailments and pain and, you know, and different, you know, arthritis and you name it, I would have been, you know, just lying there for days, you know, in this kind of excruciating darkness. Mm. So sometimes having a friend who cares enough about you to step up to the plate and be compassionate and also do what's needed can make all the difference in the world. And that, of course, is the real purpose of mm. heart space, mm. is to be able to give people the love and the compassion mm. that you want to and that they need. Mm. Okay, so let's mm. see. What do we have next? Oh, this is great. This is another uh, non-personal one, the kind of thing we all have had something like this. I hope you've never had this exact one. Um, Lisa is having trouble with the internet because she doesn't realize it was shut off. She doesn't realize that her husband forgot to pay the bill. I am the Verizon technician who comes to the door to shut off her service. And so this is how to motivate and inspire a IT tech kind of a person to give you what you need, but in this case, I'm the other side. So I'm gonna see how I handle her and don't freak her out and don't make her change to another service provider. Okay. I don't owe you $300. Are you sure? My husband always pays the bill. I'm just, I'm a little bit confused. Ma'am. I can only tell you that my department sent me out here to turn off the service. Uh, well, I kind of can't live without my phone, so if you just give me a minute to reach him, I'll find out what's sure, going on. I don't want to turn it off, you know. Okay. If you can figure out a way around this, I just want to, you know, keep my boss happy and keep you, the customer, happy. Okay. I'm sure we can figure something out okay. here. Okay. Okay. So now she goes and she calls her husband, mm -hmm. and what does he tell you? Ah, uh, he forgot to pay the bill. I'm so sorry he's out on location. He left town really quickly, and he just totally forgot to pay the bill. So, But he'll pay it by tonight, so you're not going to turn off my service, are you? Come well, on. I can't live without my phone. Right, I understand. I'll tell you what. How about if I get my boss on the phone and... You talk to him, and maybe you just give him a credit card. See if you can work that out. Because okay. I, I honestly don't okay. think. Now, maybe you can convince my boss. Maybe you can. I don't know. But um, let's see if we can find a solution, all right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll just let's just get him on the phone, and we'll take care of him and pay for okay, it. Because I'm not going to wait a whole day to have my phone back on. Great. Yeah, okay. and, they, and they would charge you for the service call of turning it off and all that. Okay. So you don't want to no, do no, that. No, no, no. Let's, yeah, you don't let's just... Do let's just get the boss on the phone. Great. Perfect. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Sorry for the trouble. Yeah. Thank um, you. We messed up. <laughs> okay. So what worked there? Uh, what worked there was having somebody who worked for a cable and phone service provider that was so helpful and sweet <laughs> and listened so well and uh, was patient. Was patient because I, I made a mistake. We made a mistake. But it happens. And you know, having somebody who was so polite and patient and willing to go through the steps to make sure that I had the service that I needed and wasn't penalized for that. Beautiful, because I can tell you I have had different scenarios where technology wasn't working and I was, as the customer, I was irate that my new Microsoft 8.1 
was giving me so much trouble and the IT help was so completely useless. Even though I had you know, the second level, level two on the phone, so completely useless that I can tell you, I had a tech person who hung up on me. And I used to have direct TV and they messed up and I had the person from direct TV hang up on me. <laughs> Now, I have a feeling it was not 100% them. I have a feeling that the way that I spoke to them was not the way I speak in the work that I do with all of you. I have a feeling, right? So I thought it was a really good one to offer today, you know, do a role play around it, because if you're really calm and you really hear people and you really take the time, you get the service you want. Now sometimes you don't want to take the time. Fair enough, that's your choice. But just make sure you get your needs met. It's like I had trouble with a store on State Street. I got the credit because they sold me the wrong thing. I got the credit. And they were awful, but I got the credit. So make sure that you're not that person who gets so angry that you just give up, storm out, whatever. That's much worse, ultimately, as a habit than just capitulating. Because if you capitulate, if you give up, you can always call the next day when you're in a better mood and fix it. But if you storm out and now, you know, you're not allowed in the store anymore or the restaurant, whatever, then you're done. So we wanted to show you something that was very realistic. And we've mm. all been there one way or another. It, it could be because you didn't pay the bill, but it could also be because there's a technical problem. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, now what great, do we great, have? Great. Let's see. Ah, um, this is sadly a very popular one in the people that I work with. This is a partner who has a problem with alcohol, but it's a serious and consistent one. And so I'm going to talk to her about it. Okay. Jane, I know that it's so disappointing to you that you were laid off. I know how much you loved your job. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my job. So good. So good. It's, it's all good money. It's, yeah, it's good. It's totally awesome. Good. And I can guess that the problem now is that you've got all this time and because we're just living on my salary for now, we don't have the money for you to go and do fun things. Is that right? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, I'm okay at just hanging out, uh, you know. It's good, money, it's, it's okay, yeah. It looks like that, that job interview you had yesterday was really disappointing and it looks like you feel really confused about how to turn this situation around, huh? Uh, I, I, I mean, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna let you sleep and uh, when I come home tonight, Maybe we could talk about this because I hate to see you being in so much discomfort, honey. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll talk. We'll talk later. Good. Okay, sweetie. Get some sleep. Yeah. So most people who haven't had what I call an addiction education would find me just giving empathy to her very confusing. Many people have been taught of the value of tough love. And uh, Dr. Frank Zizzo, the consulting uh, therapist to my business for so many years, used to say, tough love is no love at all. Mm. And so many of the clients that I've worked with who had addiction issues in their family, and if you've watched the show, you've seen Arno Jaffe on the show a bunch of times with me. The only thing that works is kindness. Now that doesn't mean I'm going out and buying her bottles of vodka. That doesn't mean I'm pretending she's, she's you know, clean and sober. But if I cannot 
retain a relationship with her, mm. we're never going to have any kind of positive result. Mm -hmm. And I do hope if you're watching the show and this is a problem that you have, please call me for that complimentary session because I have lots of shows. I can send you the links for them. I've got a lot of writing about this. You can even talk to some of my former clients whose family members are now clean and sober and have been for many, many years. Mm. You have to start here, okay? Mm. And I imagine that that's what worked for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was definitely a, a new exploration for me because I, you know, me, Lisa, personally, I wanted to talk, <laughs> but I was like, wait, right. put yourself in this situation. And how hands off you were and loving you were felt uh, really accurate and really comforting. I can imagine being in a situation like that. But we won't be. <laughs> <laughs> Hope not. We can imagine all of this. Yeah. But not one of these scenarios is one you want to be in. Empathy, okay. empathy, empathy. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Okay. okay. This may be the last because we've got a minute and 57 seconds. Oh. So you're an overbearing parent. Yeah. Um, you can't go out until I see you finish your homework, so I don't know where you're going, young lady. Wow, Mom. It sounds like you really want to be sure that I've done all the studying I need to do so I get a really good grade on this test. Absolutely, you know how important college is. Yeah, and I want to be sure you know that I finished all my homework, I filed it online, and I've been studying for this exam every single night. I've got this new technique that Susan Allen taught me, and I'm gonna do great on this test. I know, I just, you've been spending a lot of time out of the house with Janie, and I know her parents don't care too much whether she studies or not. I'm just worried you're going to be influenced by that. I totally hear it. You want to be sure that I'm doing my studying, that I'm being responsible for it, that I know all the material. And Mom, anytime you want to test me, that would be fine, but I am going out with Janie. I'm going to be back by my curfew okay. and tomorrow Saturday, so if you want to test me tomorrow morning first thing, that's fine. I really know it. Great. Tomorrow morning then. I will test you. Thank you for letting me know you've been studying. You bet. Yeah. I appreciate it. For sure. That. Yeah. Of course. It's important to me too. Mm -hmm. Good. Good, honey. Have fun. Now that's a role play I could never imagine of being in. <laughs> <laughs> either, either, you know, as that, as that kid, but that's great. We have. 12 seconds, 11 seconds. I want to thank you, Lisa. You are just a dream. You Aww. are a dream. You are <laughs> such a doll and such a brilliant actor. Thank you are you. fabulous. I can't wait to watch the show Hi. when I can just fully function and listen. And thank you to everybody, Mark and to Stephanie, who did the show today for us, the crew. We love you. Thank you Thanks. so, so much.